These are the four must-use attack strategies at Town Hall 13 in Clash of Clans. With our first attack, this is simply the Super Witch Smash. This works on a lot of different bases since it's Super Witches. Underneath healers, they're practically invincible. Pretty much in general, you are always going to be starting with the Grand Warden Walk first, and in my opinion, the best seed machine for it, the Flame Flinger. Typically, you're only going to use this if you can remove a Scatter or a Inferno in its own compartment. That's the only time where a Flame Flinger is going to be really good. You can also bring in the use of the Lightning spells. Usually, it's 5 Lightning and 1 Earthquake for a Inferno, or about 6 Lightning and 1 Earthquake for a Scatter Shot. Outside of it though, you want to make sure that you are using either the Lightning or the Flame Flinger to create the funnel for the Warden. That way you can create the other side of the funnel with your Barbarian King, and maybe any Witches if you choose on bringing any, but using the Barbarian King on the other side is the best play to funnel. Then you've got in your Super Witches to go in. For the Town Hall specifically, since it has no poison, the Super Witches can easily move through it. So you should try to find a way to break open into the base, get through the Town Hall, having a Rage and a Warren ability to support, then getting it through either an Inferno, this is where maybe a Freeze or a Skeleton spell could work really well, but also having a Jump spell to get deeper into the base, to get where around where the core is, and use another Rage spell in that area to push the Super Witches and Heroes through, where then you have another Jump spell for the back end. This is going to help you a lot as you move through the base. The Royal Champion, on the other hand, is going to be used as support, using her to remove defenses on the side, which allows her to then also move in with your heroes and your super witches. They get more value, and of course, her Royal Champ, the Royal Champion's Seeking Shield ability is going to be really helpful on dealing some damage to buildings, which is going to make it far easier in terms of getting through the rest of the base. Just remember that they are relatively slow, so you will want to bring cleanup troops like minions, goblins, barbarians, archers, you name it. You want to make sure that you are getting some cleanup in, so that way everything can safely move through for an easy 3-star. Now for our second army, if you're looking for something that's pretty simple, using the use of yetis, super wizards, and bats is an incredibly strong option. Typically, in this case, you're going to be looking for splash buildings. This includes the multi infernos, scatter shots, wizard towers, and of course, the town hall and eagle artillery. Try to look for as much splash as possible on those bases since you want to get the most amount of value from it. From here, you want to make sure that you are starting off by using two yetis and two super wizards on either side to create the funnel. This is going to help you in terms of letting your spam yetis and super wizards are going to allow them to go into the core of the base, which is where you want to be. You need to gut the core of the base or else your bats are going to have a very difficult time. You also want to be very careful of infernos in their own compartment. This is why you have that royal champion as well. So while you're sending in all of the yetis and the super wizards, you'll send the royal champion in adjacent to help support and remove the multi inferno if it's in within its own compartment. An early Grand Warren ability is also really smart with Yetis. It allows them to keep their HP, and it also makes it to where they can get deeper set, dealing damage, and all that's really good. From here, though, you just want to make sure that everything is moving in. You want to remove the Town Hall before you even start touching your bats. Start your Bat Wave. You want to use a Bat Wave and not a Bat Bomb. It's way easier to deploy, and it's also easier to control your bats and where they go. Free spells against multi infernos and wizard towers, or really any scatter shots that are still remaining up. If they're in the core, that's even better because it gets you more value. But this will get you a really easy three star against both ultis and single target infernos. And I think arguably one of the stronger versions of a lava loon is the Skelly Donut Lala, which is our third army. This attack works really well if you can remove the clan castle and inferno since they're right close together. In order to do this, you're going to start off with two skeleton spells and a bat spell for the Inferno. You're going to use the invisibility spells and time them every four seconds with the Rage. This should allow you to remove the Clan Castle and possibly the Inferno Tower, thanks to the bats. So it is very precise placement. You don't have to deal with the CC, so no, no need to deal with a Super Minion or E-Drag CC now. In any case, 
what you want to make sure that you're doing is sending in your queen. You can use your Barbarian King and Archer Queen together, but typically the Archer Queen can also remove other buildings as long as she has ample tankage. This includes having an Ice Golem, so that way your Queen could get to the Town Hall. From there, you should also send in your Barbarian King and Royal Champion. They can also do some work on another side, another part of the base. This can allow you to get a little bit more value than you typically would with just the queen on the town hall, of course, but this also allows you to remove any enemy heroes, such as the enemy queen, since that is one of your major things. With anything, you do want to make sure that you are removing the enemy queen as early as you can with the Sui before you actually start your lava lane. And when you start with that Lava Loon, you're going to start with the Stone Slammer, since you don't really need any other Siege Machine for this, not the bat even the Battle Blender. But in any case, you'll always want to use a Lava Hound with around two to three groups of Balloons with the Grand Warden moving in with them. You'll then use a Haste to also get to other key buildings. This includes things like the Ego Artillery, Infernos, Scatters, Air Defenses, Expos, and Wizard Towers. Anything that's really going to hit air is going to do a lot of damage, especially those that either hit Splash or hit Fast. In any case, you should use a Grand Warren ability in order to make sure that you keep everything alive, especially the Stone Slammer if you can. But from there, you also have other spells like Freeze that can work extremely well in dealing with something like a Multi-Inferno. Makes it easier for your balloons to get through. But from there, you should also have Cleanup using the Lava Pups and Minions to your advantage. It will really help you get the 3-star and not time fail. Now for our 4th army, a really strong variation is the use of Super Bowlers. In terms of this, you should always start with the Flame Flinger. Usually using it against a compartment that has a single Inferno is usually best. Be very careful of Mortars, however, because those can counteract the Flame Flinger. On the other side, you're going to use the Grand Warden Walk. This Warden Walk is just there in order to create the other side of the funnel. It doesn't need to be long, but in case you're going into a single Inferno, then you might want to either use a Freeze and a Rage. In any case, it's usually better to possibly sacrifice a Rage and a Freeze to help remove the single Inferno. If it's multi, you don't really need to do any of this stuff. But from here, you'll then go into your Yetis into Super Bowlers. Yetis are a great tank for them early on, especially because they provide some of that extra damage thanks to the Yeti Mites. You'll also be having your Barbarian King move in, so you're not using him to create the funnel per se on the other side to clean up other buildings. You're using him to provide more tankage for the Super Bowlers. As they work themselves in, you'll want to use a jump to get to the core, the Town Hall being one of your biggest threats, so using a Grand Warren ability just before you get there is going to be important. But you should also have your back end Royal Champion, unless you get stopped by the Barbarian King, then there's really nothing you can do. But once you've gotten through the Town Hall, realistically, the entire rest of the base should be yours, since Super Bowler Smash works really well when you're going in away from the town hall and you're able to get massive damage as you move up towards it. These attack strategies are some of the best out there and in my personal opinion even after the update it's an incredibly strong one. Town Hall 13 is pretty well balanced and since a lot of you guys like it I'll hopefully try to bring more content for Town Hall 13 for you guys.